Mourners packed a Massapequa Park Church today to remember a beloved band director. You're watching Newsday TV. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ken Bufa. Students, colleagues, and alumni are among the hundreds of people that attended the Mass for Gina Pelletieri. Steve Langford reports on what some are calling a celebration of life. Part salute, part funeral, part celebration of life. Hundreds crowded Our Lady of Lourdes Catholic Church Thursday morning to honor 43-year-old Gina Pelletieri, the Farmingdale High School band director whose life meant so much to so many. As an overflow crowd listened to the service from outside, it was standing room only inside the church for the tribute to Pelletieri, who died along with band chaperone Beatrice Ferrari a week earlier when their charter bus of marching band students crashed off Interstate 84 in Orange County. Yesterday was for our mom, today is for Gina. She was a beautiful, beautiful soul. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who has given us such support and love. It is helping us get through the most unbelievable of times. My friends, thanks for coming to celebrate Gina Rose's life. Ms. P, it's a wonderful thing to see this church packed with people who love her. Monsignor Jim Lasanti eulogizing the school band director who was a single mother raising her two and a half year old son, Joseph. What happens to the child now, he asked, seeking to comfort the little boy's grandparents. And I asked Joseph, if you could raise someone like Gina to be the incredible woman she is, Joseph will have no problems at all, at all, all the majority of his life. Let's hear it for Diane. The Monsignor concluded his tribute to the school band director with the Italian word arrivederci, which he said isn't so much goodbye as it is until we meet again. This is not the end of Pelletieri's story, the Monsignor said, because there's no better way to keep her alive than telling her story, especially as her baby Joseph grows up. I asked everyone there to remember and to treasure the memories, and then one day, when Joseph perhaps is a teenager, to say, let me tell you the way in which your mom touched my heart and changed my life, because there, there was a lot of that. A remarkable celebration for a remarkable life. Steve Langford for Newsday TV. A lawsuit has been filed against the bus company and the driver of last week's bus crash. A parent is suing Regency Transportation and the bus driver Lisa Schaefer of Center Reach. The suit accuses the company of hiring and continued employment of inept, incompetent, and unskilled employees. It also claims negligence in failing to properly maintain, check, repair, and inspect the bus. Newsday reached out to the bus company for comment but have not yet heard back. Now make sure to head over to Newsday.com for continued coverage of the Farmingdale High School bus crash. And the FBI arrested a Long Island pastor accused of sexually exploiting a minor. Court papers say Brentwood pastor Jose Saiz Jr. allegedly admitted to pressuring a teenage boy into taking and sending graphic photos. The 20-year-old is a pastor at Iglesia Cristiana Alambrando El Camino Church. And looking to buy a home, a Newsday analysis breaks down where home prices have increased and where they have dropped. Sherry Einhorn and business reporter Jonathan Lamantia have the ups and downs of home buying on the island. During the COVID-19 pandemic, home prices on the island went soaring, sometimes literally through the roof. Things have settled down a bit now, but prices still seem to be a little bit all over the place. Joining me to talk more about that is Newsday business reporter Jonathan Lamantia. Jonathan, what's been going on the first half of the year here on the island? Right, so for Long Island, excluding the east end in the first half of the year, prices were relatively flat, about down about 0.2% um, compared to the year before. Why are prices changing? So it's basically been a tug of war between supply and demand. You have high mortgage rates, which are really hurting demand because they make housing more expensive. Um, but supply is kind of winning out because uh, with high mortgage rates, people really don't want to put their homes on the market. Um, and so we have near a record low of houses uh, for sale on the market for people to buy. I mean, supply and demand ebb and flow, but uh, Long Island has been caught in kind of a rut of low inventory for a while, um, and that's what's really put a lot of upward pressure on prices. Okay, and so what are we seeing, though? Some communities high, some communities low. What stands out to you? Yeah, so a few communities were either up 10% or down 10% um, over the course of, you know, from the first half of 2023 versus 2022. Um, the ones that were up more than 10% include uh, Rockville Center, uh, Manorville, um, and Lake Grove, and then down 10% include 
include Great Neck, Dix Hills, uh, and West Islip. And what's the reasoning for that? So there are a lot of different reasons for that. We talked to a bunch of agents, but you know, one factor that, that sometimes affects this is kind of the mix of homes that are sold. So if you have more co-ops and condos selling in a town in one year or more lower priced homes, that could bring down the median a little bit. Um, but overall, we're seeing pretty stable pricing on Long Island. Okay, lots to digest. Jonathan Lamantia, business reporter for Newsday. Thank you. And let us know what, if anything, changes as we continue in the second half of the year. Thank you for staying on top of the story. Thank you. Now for more on home prices across Long Island, head over to Newsday.com, click Get More, below the Newsday TV video box. A new police training village is coming to Nassau. This changes training in this country like never seen before. You won't see the word tactical anywhere in it. This is a training village. This is to take you out of the classroom and put you into that real life scenario. Now today's groundbreaking marked phase two of the project. The village will have mock school settings, houses of worship, and other community spaces. All right, let's take a look at your Long Island weather, and it doesn't look too good for tomorrow. In fact, we have rain tonight, and as you can see, rain tomorrow too. So take a closer look, you can see it's coming all day, so it's not gonna be a great Friday, but at least it is Friday. Watch Newsday TV on the big screen. Use the remote to activate Siri, Alexa, Roku, or the Google Assistant on your streaming device. Say, install Newsday. Newsday TV, covering Long Island like no one else can. The Long Island Medium is launching a new show. Melissa DiStefano spoke with Teresa Caputo in a story you'll see only in Newsday. You have to get used to having cameras in your house again. <laughs> it's so natural for me. It's the weirdest thing, but like having a camera, it's just like, it's just another day here at the uh, Caputo house. It's like they never left. He's newly departed, correct? Filming has begun for Teresa Caputo's new TV show on Lifetime, titled Teresa Caputo Raising Spirits. It's a new show. It's, listen, at the end of the day, Elisa, I still talk to Dick. <laughs> I said, Teresa, there was something deep in my soul that knew that I wasn't going to live a long life. He said, I feel like if it was one word to describe how the show is different, it's intimate. Yeah. It's more behind the scenes of really seeing like how I really do interact with my crew, how my crew is, what goes on on a daily basis. And for Lifetime wanting to show that part, um, I just think is really, really special. I'm still in the same house. I still live next door to my parents. I haven't gone anywhere. I mean, look, I'm a grandma. I mean, that's different. <laughs> You'll also see Teresa's life on the road as she travels on tour doing live shows. You've been touring for 10 years. Crazy. <laughs> um, and every year your tour brings you back home. To always end the year on such a, a beautiful high note, mm -hmm. but at the Paramount is amazing. See Teresa at the Paramount December 6th and 7th and back on TV right after the new year. How many people get a television show, mm -hmm. first of all. And then True. to be on TV for 10 years, and then to be approached to still do what I do and not ask me to change a thing and allow me to continue to be me is an opportunity of a lifetime. What I do is so much more than just communicating with people that have died. It really, truly raises our spirits. Yes, thank you for doing what you do. And we're always so happy to have you home. It's always so great to be in your home. Yes. I mean, even after and all these years, you're still coming to my house. <laughs> Elisa DiStefano, Newsday TV. Now to read more about Teresa's new show, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. There's a new immersive 3D dining experience right here on the island, and it's a story you'll see only in Newsday. It's something that we've been thinking about doing, and someone brought the animation part to us. So it kind of creates a whole storyline, and the story is based on two characters, and Naya and Ed, and the food is surrounded by different segments of the show. So it's really kind of a cool animation, uh, food, kind of experience. The animation part of it will be actually on the table. Uh, it's three-dimensional, it's got a really cool vibe to it, and there's always something spinning, turning, rolling. It's very uh, 
animation submersive. The interaction is fantastic. I'm amazed at, at, at the graphics. The, the three-dimensional thing that caught my eye, really. It's, you know, you see the characters in the, uh, in, in the table, on top of the table, where do they come from? And you can see that like, they're almost coming from underneath the table. It's fantastic. I think the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway is that food can be great, fun, and you can add elements to your experience to elevate it. It's something that my, one of my partners and I have been talking about doing um, at 317 for years, and this is like the first step for us. So it really gives us a good leg into where we want to go with it and what we want to do and how we want to execute it. Cool is that. Now to read more about this dining experience, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More on the Newsday TV video box. What's Up on Long Island is brought to you by PC Richard & Son. All right, here's what's up on Long Island. Oktoberfest in the Beer Garden. You can celebrate German culture with traditional music, dancing, food, and beer. It's Saturday at Plate Deutsch Park Beer Garden in Franklin Square. Or check out some preseason hockey. The New York Rangers take on the New York Islanders tomorrow night. The puck drops at 7 p.m. at UBS Arena. And Circus Vasquez is coming to Huntington Station. See high-flying acrobats, struggling acts, clowns, and more all weekend long at the Walt Whitman Shops. Now for admission info and more events, of course, go to Get More and click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. There's nothing like when you finish a story, you have this product that goes out to the world and hopefully brings some truth to you know society. Newsday, covering Long Island like no one else can. You're watching Newsday TV. I'm Ken Bufa. Thank you so much for joining us. We leave you now with a look at your seven-day forecast.